Hello my soccer universe. Well, if you're wanting to watch a cheery video, this is not the video because I am pretty much down. That season cannot be over soon enough. And it's mainly because of these guys in, that I put now up here in black uh, yesterday. Uh, it's just ejecting to see such tiredness and such non-sharpness and that in a season where it was a positive season for Milan. It was. And it's all going down the hill at the moment. And uh, Same thing for my other favorite team, Lusk. It just does not bode well and I was already fearing this game yesterday quite some and yeah. You got served and we'll talk about this a little bit later. So Milan for the first time this season not in the top four, the worst position. Yes, five games to go, but they are trending definitely in the wrong direction. The trending wrong direction can also be said for Juve, although they claw themselves back into a game that they had, especially when they consider the first have no business of winning Inter, one closer to the title. I am wearing Cagliari because Cagliari is managing potentially the big escape. Uh, just a few weeks ago we thought that Cagliari is more or less done and dusted and will go down. Now they're out of the relegation spots. Uh, pretty wild development there. And then another southern team, Napoli looks like, and Atalanta, those two look like at the moment pretty much shoe-ins for the Champions League as well in the form that they currently are. So yeah, but the biggest escape by Cagliari, that's why I decided, okay, we gotta wear uh, this team. <laughs> hey, I'm smiling, I'm smiling. Let's walk through the games. I actually saw less than usual um, and I also have not watched any highlights because I, I don't, I'm not feeling it at the moment. The season is anyway already too long and too intense. So, and then if things are going not my way, there are some times where, yes, I will still watch, but I'm not feeling it. Um, so I saw barely, uh, I, I always, I, I think I saw, saw the winning goal in a, in a halftime of Fiorentina Juve, but Parma Crotone, boy, this must have been a great game. Uh, I know this will be the two teams that will be going going down, but they they are going down with a bang. Maybe Crotone giving themselves the tiniest of chances. I just don't see it on 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 on, 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 on with the win. Uh, Crotone had a three one halftime lead after it being one one um, in the 29th through Anari, but then Simi and Unas. Uh, just before they have made it 3-1. Uh, but Parma comes back through Javinho and Mihaila uh, by the 54th, that, uh, in the 69th is 4-3. At that point you're thinking, we might even get more goals, but no, there were none uh, more, but 4-3. Uh, That's always a fun result. And the way it went, um, yeah, Parma could twice equalize. But yeah, uh, really, really e exciting. Cannot tell you much about Inter Verona. Let's talk about that first. Um, into getting uh, the win. I laid on with Darmian. We heard the story before. I think Inter just is now getting the wins. Not flashy, nothing like that. It's not needed. You just need to back the wins. And I think there is a constellation where they potentially could become champions next week. But you know, in two weeks' time, Inter are champions. And that ends Juve's reign. Speaking of Juve, five minutes, I think they were in the game. And then Fiorentina outplayed them left and right and just couldn't convert. I think they hit the cross, but there were some good saves in, in there. But uh, Fiorentina should have led by two goals at the half easily. Um, that they only got one through a penalty that, yeah, I think you can give it, but I did not necessarily expect it to be given at that point. But Vlahovic gets another goal. Yeah, Vlaovic probably the most desired strike at the moment uh, in Italy. Although I'm always a little bit, yes, he's doing great at Fiorentina, but I'm always a little bit hesitant. If he now makes a jump to a big club, it might come a little bit too soon. You know, you never know. Uh, I actually would like him to stay at uh, Fiorentina for another season, even though Milan really, really, really wants him. So, yeah. No, that's for another time, that, that, that discussion. But um, Juve definitely needed to do something and they did something. Dybala, who was a no-show, Ronaldo was a no-show, and even bon uh, Bonucci came off. Uh, Bonucci also kind of, I mean, back there, it, it, it really looked bad what Juve were, were doing. 
But then right F, F the F quadrado pill, plays a ball to Morata, who from a very weird angle puts it in. Uh, potentially offside, but it, it was given not so. Uh, the goal stood, and then Juve actually had a short period that really you thought yeah, they could turn it around. But I think later on, Fiorentina had a little bit the upper hand. Still, it ends 1-1. One, one. Um, at that point, I'm thinking, yeah, maybe this was not uh, such a bad result for Milan, although I was hoping for Fiorentina to pull another one. But, you know, they're getting four points of Juve uh, in the season. You cannot really ask for more there. And then Cagliari Roma. Uh, yeah, I, sh I watched that one because Lask was doing so badly at, at Sturm Graz. And then it's funny that uh, former Sturm Graz player Luko Janis actually gets the first goal. Uh, for Cagliari or, or in the fourth minute um, and Cagliari really low looking good but the Roma fought themselves back and they get equalizers through Perez and um, I think it was an even game and that's another thing I mean it's not only that Milan is doing bad Roma is my second uh, favorite team and they're also not doing all that great so the, the, that Serie A season is really going pear shape in all uh, shapes and forms for me um, the game is then decided in a very short period, uh, right about the half a mark in the second half, where Marin and Joao Pedro make it 3-1. Roma can only pull one back uh, through Fazio, uh, but they cannot find an e equalizer. And I actually thought that Cali fully deserved that win as well. 3-1, 3-2, uh, it ends, and Cali as we'll see, exiting the relegation zone. Uh, Atalanta-Bologna, yeah, that was not much of a contest. Uh, it was already 2-0 at, at the half, Malinowski and the uh, Muriel penalty. Then uh, Scouten gets uh, sent off. Yeah, a reckless challenge in, in, in a way. And from that moment on, then, I mean, 57-59th, uh, Freud and Zapata make the scoreline. Comfortable, even more comfortable than Miranchuk adds another one. I mean, Atalanta is cruising at, at, at the moment. And from all the teams that we are said are in the Champions League battle, Atalanta is the team that really seems safest now. Atalanta is where Milan was uh, a few months ago. Uh, the problem is the season is ending now. And I think Atalanta, we don't need, need to worry. They will be in the Champions League again, which, all bitterness aside, I have to say, Atalanta... It's, it's a major miracle what they can do. They are up there with the top teams in Italy. Uh, we used to have the Seven Sisters in the late 90s. We kind of have them now again, but it's now Atalanta that takes the Fiorentina spot, which is pretty, pretty, pretty remarkable. They are uh, doing excellent work. And that with other Papu Gomez and we, even Ilicic kind of fading away. And Milan, please do not buy Ilicic. I don't think he will get you any, anywhere. He's very enticing. He can be, but I, I, I think he will be a frustrating player that I don't necessarily want to see, to be honest. Yesterday, I was also hoping that Torino can do something against Napoli because Torino also need kind of the points. I mean, they're looking safeish, but they really need the points uh, to distance themselves further. And I want a Torino to be in the um, in Serie A. However, Napoli just it was a long range off from Bakwaku in the eleventh, and then uh, they got get caught on the counter. They get that Ozyman can convert, although I think in the, in the end it was an own goal from the defender uh, who wants to clear. I think it was Bremer. And that was that Napoli, I think, hitting twice the woodwork. Uh, Torino only having half chance, chances, but it was a fully deserved win by Napoli there. And Napoli is another team that's trending right, and you are thinking if there were no COVID and if there were not injuries, Napoli is a team that I think could have challenged for the title. I always said they are probably uh, one of the, the three most talented sides in Serie A. So yeah, uh, but that would have been uh, big, I would have to say. And then Lazio Milan. And I, you know, a year ago Lazio was challenging for the title. This year, Milan was challenging for the title, and then after the Corona break, Lazio was training down, but Lazio could hang on. And I was hoping that it's the same thing for Milan, because Lazio in the end got comfortably in there. But uh, that league is so tight, which is good for the league, bad for this Milan fan. This was a game that in the first half, honestly, was uh, open. I mean, the first chance, and, and it showed, it, watch just the first two, two minutes, it tells you everything about the game. There was a huge chance right from the kick 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 of a Rebic and Chalanoglu have a nice attacking move but it's all too cute and the focus is kind of missing and then on the other side Immobile uh, plays uh, Korea on side who can with a brilliant move the way he gets with his leg can get around Donnarumma it is 1-0 in the second minute 
And then Lazio really had actually a chance. I mean, there was a point blank shot by Immobile that Don Don Donnarumma makes a great save. And that's the other thing that this Donnarumma and Chalanoglu renewal saga, this is another thing that it just adds to this negative spiral around uh, Milan. Uh, added to that the Super League talk where Milan is still not out, but what I hear potentially they had a contract uh, clause that said we signed this contract if this competition is approved by FIFA and UEFA. Not sure if the rumors are true, but I read this so like a kind of yeah uh, you know i want to exonerate million from the whole thing because i know why they want to be they don't want to meet me with myself but they, they haven't clearly stated now nah, the super league is not is bothering me as well so yeah uh and they put themselves at this stage of the season a big target on their back I think everyone would like that you and Milan are not finishing in the top four at this very moment and it might well be um as I said, Milan then clawed themselves into the game, I think, after 20 minutes. Milan was really dominating the game, but every single attack, there was either a pass to many, a last pass misplaced, a little bit punch up front. Um, I think that the Mandzukic uh, deal was not a bad one to try, but don't give him the number nine. We know number nine, the Milan don't do well. Uh, yeah. It was nice, it was nice to look at, but it was fruitless in the end. And that's exactly, I mean, it could have been 2 0 at the half, but Lazzari was fortunately offside. Uh, the golden came early in the second half again, Correa, after Luis Alberto assist, make, makes it 2 0. At that point, I totally lost interest in the game because, because that, that settled the game, honestly. It has to be said though that uh, preceding the 2 0 was a clear foul on Chalanoglu, where the referee even looked at it on the VAR screen, and I don't know how he's not giving it. I think he was dead set. And so bothered by Chalanoglu, who has been already uh, lamenting a lot, which is another thing. Don't do that. Don't tick the referee. He was just looking, no, I've seen it. This was not just a little touch or whatever. I, I, I don't know. He chalked, chalked it off. <sighs> Just adding to that, and yeah, I didn't think a Milan could come back again. There were uh, many attacks, but it's also cute with heels and from volleys and whatever. <sighs> and you can see that the squad is depleted and tired. Uh, they played a lot, they played the Europa League, they've started in qualification. Uh, you could get over all these injuries early in the season when everything is still fresh but i feel the squad is overplayed and completely lost their mojo and i think milan will not make it for much longer as i said in the table milan is now in four, fifth place the worst in the, in the season we have three teams at 66 points but it really Looks like that it is Atalanta, who is what I just, just pointed out. They are clear in the Champions League. Napoli looks strong. And it's you and Milan that you have to uh, worry about. And what uh, also makes me not very op optimistic is that Milan has to play uh, you and Atalanta away from home. They have Benevento uh, at home now. At home, they don't play well. Away from home, they have tough games. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. I mean, then you have Kallier at home who are fighting for survival. So, yeah, um, as I said, Inter Champions Atalanta in Napoli looking strong. Juve Milan Lazio. If Lazio wins the game in hand, they are right in the thick of it and might even overtake Milan for the Europa League spot, which maybe it's not the worst thing. If you don't make a chance at Champions League, don't waste your uh, energies on the Europa League. On the bottom, Cagliari, 28%. Spezia and Benevento. Torino looking at least uh, the thanks to the game in hand and you know with the rating kind of safe each other. The game in hand is against Lazio who really really looks strong at the moment and Parma and Crotone more or less look down and out. Uh, and as I said, expect to Milan is now fifth. Milan is now fifth. Napoli overtook, oh, 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 overtook them. You Lots of changes actually mid-table and then Kaller is also at the moment at the safe side. It is Benevento that is a uh, room that is probably going down, which is also also a bit because Benevento is a team that really, really uh, plays enjoyable stuff, but uh, leaking too many goals on the back. Next round, Milan has to play Benevento. Uh, that's maybe the one where you came maybe close. I'm even considering not, not watching uh, to, to be honest. That's the way I will watch. Probably. Uh, there's not really a standard time in Sassolo Atalanta. That could be an interesting one. 
Uh, but other than that, Sampdoria, Roma, maybe uh, Udine, Juve. I don't see it. As I said, Inter, I don't think can become champions just yet. Uh, but I have to say, there's not. I mean, Bologna, Fiorentina is a local derby, but has nothing to do much for the table. So yeah, uh, they're not uh, really, really big games in there. But you know, we have to watch uh, Lazio, uh, Milan, and Juve, Napoli potentially uh, to see who will end up where. Okay. That was it for me from Serie A. I'm sorry that I uh, was a little bit uh, on the negative side in this one. Um, I hope things will go up again, but I don't see it happening for Milan, to be honest. Give me a thumbs up if you still enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Let me know what you think about where Serie A is trending. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get an update whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, wish you a wonderful day. Bye!